it is always soft and it draws together the variety of the first 12 mantras. We play now, please, only the repeated note, notes. How did I find the duration of this? It is nothing but the sum of all the 12 mantras, the first mantras, added up to here, and then subdivided proportionately into the durations that are given in the mantra itself. <coughs> in 53 units, and then I find these notes. Now this is, if I can say, the structure of the bones of the entire first section and on top you will hear now the individual mantras. The first one you have heard at the beginning, we don't need to play it again. The second one of duration 27 here is indicated as three, which means in the mantra itself there is a chromatic order, you know that from A to G sharp. A is number one as a note. Then the next higher note, A sharp, would be number two. The B is number three. So the second note in the mantra is number three. Then the next, the C, which is here, is number four in the chromatic scale. The C sharp, or D flat, would be number five, etc. Until G sharp is number 12 in the chromatic scale. Do you understand what I'm saying? I see a few faces that don't. I play it. That's uh, quite important. Let's say I have here a chromatic scale. And I say this is one. Then this is two. Then this is three. Then this is four. This is five. And this finally is twelve. One to twelve. Now, if I say the first note is one, then the, the entire mantra, 53, the very first number, is named the number one. The second note in the mantra is number three in a chromatic scale. And I have taken these numbers now for the expansion of the mantra itself. So, which means the second mantra will have the expansion number three. The third mantra will have the expansion number 12. The fourth mantra will have the expansion number eight. The next mantra will have the expansion number nine. And expansion, you know what I'm talking about. We have heard these expansions. 
Then the next mantra will have the expansion number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The next mantra will have the expansion number 11, the G. The next one, expansion number 7. The next one, expansion number 5. And number 4. Number 2. Number 10. And number 1. That means 1 and 13 are identical. And we hear now these expansions. Please uh, play now the expansion number 3, which is the second in the piece. So it's, it's characteristic that the second mantra in the piece has as many uh, uh, accentuated notes at the end as possible, which means also the character of the second note now becomes determining for the complete mantra itself. Da, 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 di, da, 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 that comes from the second note. Just play the beginning again. Da, da, di. You see, all the notes now get an accent at the end which was the character of the second note of the mantra. So now the complete second mantra has the quality of the second note. On top of this, we hear the twelfth mantra, derived from the fact that it is the twelfth expansion because it is the third note in the mantra itself. We hear now this of duration number seven with expansion number twelve, please. And then immediately afterwards we hear um, a mantra which has the duration three, which is the shortest, the most compressed, with the expansion eight, which was derived from this one. Please. There it is. Extremely contracted. Now we hear the next mantra, which has uh, the expansion number nine, and it has the duration seven. Expansion is derived from this note. It was the seventh note in the mantra. Please. Who has it? Did you hear? The tremolo determines this one, whereas the previous one, Romagno, could, could you play that again, the number eight? Did you hear? Let's play it again. It has as, many, as much as I can these grace notes inside. Whereas the uh, expansion number nine had the tremolos inside. Now we hear the mantra number six that should have chords. Play that one, please, with the chords. Yes, that should become clear. Almost every note has a chord. Play it, play it a little slower and emphasize the chords. They always... There. Chord, chord, chord. So it's filled with chords, which comes from here. The sixth note, or the sixth mantra up here. So the next one should have many accents at the beginning, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. It's mantra with the eleventh expansion and very short. Uh, no, no, not so short. It's fourteen. Fourteen. Accents at the beginning. Please. Do you hear Tiki ta ta always the accent at the beginning, it comes from this note. So the entire mantra now has the character of the seventh note. It is the seventh in the order, and it had expansion number 11, like the seventh note was the eleventh note in the chromatic scale. 
What I'm trying to show you is that everything unfolds out of one thing into a cosm, into, into a musical uh, macrocosm. The next one is uh, expansion number seven, which comes from this node. So there should be a lot of chromatic combinations, uh, uh, co co connections within this mantra. It has also the duration 14. Who has it? are combined with chromatic notes, in between the notes. There you are, I said before, chromatic, but based on a different scale. In this scale, case, for example, on the scale number seven, naturally, chromatic means something else. It means all the possible notes of the scale. But there are no more than the notes of the scale in this particular case. There is no chromatic scale uh, of, of the piano itself uh, used but only the steps of the scale of this particular expansion. Now we have a, a note, a mantra, which is always with staccato. It is derived from the ninth note and has the fifth expansion. Staccato. it switches from one piano to the other. It's subdivided into two parts uh, in space. And now we have the, the tenth note with irregular repetition, which is derived from this. Well, what is irregular repetition? The extreme of an irregular repetition is, for example, a Morse code. And if you would come to the rehearsals or to the concert, you would hear that at some point in the piece, there's a whole section all of a sudden where not only all the notes are irregularly repeated, but that actually the player opens a radio and uses a Morse code that he receives through a shortwave receiver, and you hear the which come all from these two notes. So there is a connection made to all sorts of irregular repetitions of the same note at all speeds and always with the pitches that are given by the expansion of the mantra. Uh, we come now to uh, mantra four, uh, expansion number four, which is the... Oh, no, I said this. We must hear that first. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Let me hear ten, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It is the very long one, is it? With the fourth... Yes. Just a moment. Start again. It is uh, the first really long, longer one. 106 as a duration. On top of this uh, 106 units long mantra based on irregular repetition, we hear um, the mantra with expansion on the second scale, the second narrowest, 
compared to the chromatic one and with the duration seven it should have the characteristics of trills which have already occurred in the previous one like an announcement please uh, we heard we hear now this one number two And now the last one in the first large cycle, which is mantra with expansion 10, based on this note here, which means we hear a lot of sforzatos. And it has the expansion uh, corresponding to the G flat in relation to the A. Duration twice as long as the previous one, namely 14 units. Beautiful. <laughs> We have heard the first 12 uh, expansions of the mantra. Each one has the characteristics of, in the, of the mantra in the order of the notes of the mantra. And I showed you just before these 12 expansions that underlaying as a unifying element, as I said, as the bone of this first region, we have heard the total mantra stretched out in repeated notes. Do you remember this? There was just one mantra going from piano to piano, very long, over the total time span of the first uh, region, was only with repeated notes. And you hear now both together. So you hear the repeated notes, notes underlying, plus the 12 first uh, expansions of the mantra. I should say that each mantra in the first second section starts with an A. You may have heard this. The A, which is the first note. Each section starts again with the A. Though the expansions are different, but they all start with an A and come back to an A as the first and thirteenth note of the mantra. When you hear now the beginning of this uh, composition, then there's a, a very short element at the beginning. I said it is the shortest possible introduction in the history of music. And you will hear why. The mantra, as you know, has four limbs. In the beginning, you hear four chords. Please play the four chords. The four chords of the beginning of the piece. Thank you. One, two, three, four. And these four chords have the duration 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, like also the first limb. Play again with, with the duration. And. <laughs> 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um. And the notes of these four limbs are nothing but the notes of the mantra of these four limbs verticalized. The first chord is which is ya da di da as a chord. The next one is these two notes. Yes, the next one is these four notes. Play them one after another and together. That's, and the last one is these three notes. One after another, together. So, all four chords. Thank you, and we are in the piece. Uh, now we can play, I think, the entire section up to here, as the piece is written. I should uh, say something before they start. I have used an additional instrument, which is called the antique symbol. Each player has 13 antique symbols, or, or a certain, yes, a certain number of antique symbols, and the antique symbols are exactly the notes of the mantra, and each, time, each player uses them throughout the piece, once to, to mark the large sections of the composition. So there is an additional timbre, an additional color, which marks clearly larger sections, and it is, it is the, the symbol that you will hear right at the beginning, 
And then there's another instrument uh, I might not be able to explain the complete function of the instrument. Each one has also a wood block. Could you just play a... S okay, and here is one. There are two wood blocks, and these wood blocks mark, again, uh, cycles in the piece, which I have not explained yet, that they are cycles of, of character change. There's another cycle superimposed to what I have just ex explained. Well, please hear now the first uh, region of mantra with all the 12 uh, expansions. Very sorry. We have forgotten to put the, the modulation on because we won't play it again tonight. Do you have it on? But I don't hear it. Now I hear it. Yes. Yes. Well, there's something more. I say it only in one sentence and then we first hear it and then I explain. The sound of the pianos is modulated electronically. And it is modulated exactly with frequencies, with vibrations that correspond to the 12 notes of the mantra itself. Which means the entire first section in both players' parts is modulated with the first note itself. The further a note goes away from this frequency, which is what we call a mirror frequency, around which everything that is going into the modulator is mirrored upwards and downwards in frequencies, one hears the upper sums and the differences of the incoming signals and the incoming sim signals themselves are suppressed what concerns the, the, the output of these modulators. But we hear the piano sound in addition to the modulated sound. Ja, yeah, pl play, play once the mantra itself. Aha, a little bit more of the modulation. So there is a principle for a complete new harmonic concept in music. That means if you have such a mirror frequency, the consonances like the octaves or the notes themselves in relation to the mirror frequency that they are mirrored with, sound fairly normal. They sound like a piano note. But the more the notes of the piano go away from the mirroring frequency, the more the sound sounds anew. It takes on a new timbre, which is the result of the more complicated relationships between the piano notes and the notes of the mirroring frequency that I feed into this modulator. So this might be enough for you. It, it is chosen in order to establish a new relationship between harm, harmonic structuring and timbre structuring. Now we hear it with the modulators, please.
that was the end just of the first region and we hear a little bit more just to show you how now in the second region all the characteristics, the overall characteristics will be determined in the background layer by the second note which is always these uh, accents at the end and then we have another 12 uh, transformations you might follow now yourself or copy it afterwards we have another 12, 1, 2, 3 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then comes the third region. And then a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then comes the fourth region. And uh, these, uh, you see, 1, 3, 12, 8, 9, 6, 11, 7, 5. We have here 1, 3, 12, 8, 9, 6, 11, 7, 5. There is the first change. There are slight changes now within the expansions of the notes, but the principle is always followed that the mantra itself is um, shown on a next larger uh, time scale. Just play a little more of the second uh, region. <laughs> Now we are here. We come on. There. That's enough. Now I have just to add a few more indications about the 13 times 12 cycles or regions as I call them. Cycles is the right, right word because cyclically it always repeats in the order of the notes of the mantra itself the expansions. I have uh, drawn them here once more on the blackboard regular repetition like in the mantra itself which determines the whole first region and the second region is notes with accents at the end according to the second note of the mantra itself the third one normal notes the third region the fourth region was a lot of appoggiaturas whereby these notes here the number of these notes vary then, like the four elements in the first limb, there is here uh, a darker line separating these, fear, these four because I have, as you will see later on, only within such larger sections exchanged uh, certain indications, like, like the ones that I'm explaining in this moment. So they switch around in the order, like here for example. You see that here the six has been here and now it goes here, chords. Here's tremolo, chords, accent at the beginning, then we have chromatic or scalar connection between the notes, staccato, morse, which is irregular repetition of the note, trill, sforzato, arpeggio. These are the 13 large regions of the piece. 
Number one here. We have heard these first 12 ones, each one having a different characteristic. You remember, we have played them all. Now the second region, which is here indicated with red number two as well, has almost the same like the number one. We have first Apeji, the, the mantra, which would be here, this mantra, this one, 27 in duration. Then uh, with, aha, Apeji combined with regular repetition. Should actually be the other way around. Regular repetition and Apeji I have added. Then accents at the end is the same normal note. Uh, Apogeturas. Nine. Um, as a character is now becoming caught and the uh, six is becoming tremolo the two are uh, exchanged this is to have not always uh, the same order then uh, in we have here an exchange the chromatic connection uh, goes to the previous uh, mantra and then the accent at the beginning goes to the next one. Morse ex ex is exchanged in order with the staccato. Trill and sforzato remain the same. That is this uh, uh, region which is indicated by Roman numeral number two. Then comes Roman numeral number three and you can follow again the order. Here is something new Though it is the twelfth expansion, th this number gives, gives always the expansion. You know that in the meantime. One, three, twelve, eight, nine, six, eleven, seven, five, four, two, ten, one. These were the expansions which correspond to these blue numbers. But the expansion is not always now with the same characteristic, as I have explained. There are exchanges. For example, here all of a sudden, we uh, see an accent at the beginning, which... Uh, in the previous one was here. Normal was here with eight. So that one by one you would find that in the piece now the same expansions have different characteristics. So that there is not too much a uh, pre-established uh, connection of character and expansion. You see eight has here for the third third time, uh, the second time, uh, appoggiaturas or grace notes, then it has normal notes, accent at the beginning, arpeggi, and regular repetition. The eight. I begin now to change the character, which is related to the same expansion. Like here the number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine has a chord, number nine has uh, grace notes. Then here number nine has tremolo. In this, we should look where the number nine has moved. Number nine is here, with tremolo at the very end, and here too. This had another reason. I first started writing everything out in the same order like in the beginning, but then I found out that, for example, a specific ex expansion would automatically have to be connected with the same duration sometimes. And then I changed the order of the expansions because I wanted that the same expansion, when it reoccurs, has a different duration. And that led me then to these exchanges of the numbers which indicate the expansions. You indicate this? Uh, you, you understand this? That different the same expansion should have different durations, or vice versa. If one combines almost automatically here two different uh, number orders, then one comes to solutions which give uh, several times exactly the same combination. And in order to vary, then I change the number of uh, the expansion, which is here the case. So we have 1, 3, 12, 8. Then here of sudden 1, 6, 12, 8. So the 6 goes instead of the 3 because he would have had, I would have to have a three, but it would occur with the same duration, and I didn't want this, so I put a six in here. Because the six obviously also had occurred in this row with the same duration, and it was a good reason to exchange the two, etc. 
So finally, you see the principle of varying more and more. I have only drawn it up to the sixth region. There are, as you know, 13 all in all. They would have to follow. I didn't need to copy this too. But you see the principle now. Increasing variation of the relationship between expansion and character. There's something that is not clear from uh, this explanation is the following. Every now and then, after I had written out all these uh, pre-established uh, structural uh, principles, every now and then I tried something out on the piano while I was composing. It was a second state. And then I've uh, I got caught many times by what I heard, what I tried out. And I call these uh, excursions, musical excursions, or in another context I have called them insertions. For example, I remember when once I was uh, uh, trying, where is that, 200, 205, 205. Uh, I mean, the, the measures now. There was one evening, uh, I remember a, st a structure which I had to compose, which was like this. And it came with a... Uh, excuse me, what is it? Yes. That was it. And I had a, a, a determination of durations which was too fast for these intervals. So I thought, what can I do? I was trying out or with these pitches. Ah. I was trying them out in the rhythm and then I thought, put a metronome and thought I, it has still to be faster. It has. Ah. I thought, they are going to make notes and after a while I thought, what shall I do? And then I had the idea, well, I just composed this. <laughs> and that is what you're going to hear now. You'll hear that structure, it begins, and then it leads to a complete excursion before we come back into the piece. Just here, we'll play it now.
So there are many more of this sort of excursion. So I got, for example, uh, uh, caught by uh, one little element of the mantra and I pushed the pedal and that sounded very, very uh, wonderful in that particular la uh, register and with that particular uh, constellation. And then I, I started repeating it for, for about 20, 30 times until I came back. Uh, I didn't prepare you to show this. Where, where is that, for example? I, I might look at it. Uh, oh, it, it is not important. Uh, please, pl I mean, you, you can hear it during the rehearsals or whatever it is. There are many of this sort of, of insertions or excursions which just came from the pianistic uh, experiments that I might, made myself during the composition process. Uh, when I came closer to the end, and in this particular case, I ov overlooked naturally from the very first moment on the entire piece, except of these excursions. Uh, when I came almost to the end, I uh, had the idea that uh, it came like a flashlight, and I didn't think twice, that it would be wonderful to uh, bring once the entire piece at that particular moment, which was a moment after a long uh, lyric, lyrical part, to show the entire piece in its, in its extreme compression. Compression, which means all the mantras which are drawn out here with different durations and different characteristics compressed to such an extent that each note has just the time to be played as fast as possible and without any characteristics, because there's, even, there's no time. There, there can also be no dynamic differentiations, because there is no time. Everything is extremely compressed in time. And you hear now uh, the total work, again, I say, except the excursions, uh, of the 156 mantras, 13 times 12, in the shortest possible time. Naturally, I could have done this uh, almost mechanically, but uh, what happens is that uh, with each new section in the mantra, one complete mantra is verticalized, which means it is the, that, the, that the notes are uh, played together in a chord. And that leads naturally in 13 times 12 mantras, more and more to a complete verticalization of the piece until it finally stands still, because it's, it's nothing but chords. But each chord lasts at l as long as the notes, if they would have been played one after another, would have taken in time. Understand? So if, if you imagine the whole piece played as melodies that go up and down with the mirror form, and then uh, after the first section I have one chord, jump, and it lasts just as long as 12 notes would have lasted, or 13 notes would have lasted. And then the second time, next chord, so we have already two chords, until finally the last section, all the 13, excuse me, the last 12 mantras are all verticalized in chords and the whole piece gets stuck. It's vertical. The melodies have become uh, blocks of sound. You know where to start? It's just before that fast section. You go into it where it announces da da No, 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 no. Start a little earlier where it goes da da and then the other one da da Yes, and then the other one did da da and then you went da da Then you go. And then.
Uh, well, I have arrived today, and we will work on this. <clears throat> and a little bit. No, it simply means that uh, a few things that one can say. I have worked the piece before, and then it becomes easier to hear and to play. That is almost all one can say about the structuring of mantra. Uh, for those who want to go into more detail, uh, anyway, such a lecture is not enough. But you can get an overall view of what I did. I started with one formula, which I later on called a mantra, because in our language there is no word. We have had the word theme or motive in classical music, but uh, these entities, these formulas, were all, always used in a completely different way. Uh, we have had the word series, but also series, with which I have worked for many years, has a completely different meaning. Mantra is, as it is said in this text, uh, which I found in a book that I read during the time when I uh, conceived Mantra, a book written by Sat Prem about Sri Aurobindo, or the adventure of consciousness, where he spoke about the mantric art. And I quoted it simply because I found these were the best words to express what I had done. I had many other words in mind before, and I discussed them with friends, and when I came up with the word mantra, most of the people that I asked said, asked back, what does it mean? They did not know what it means. They had heard a little bit about mantras in India and uh, about the fact that certain words are given by masters to pupils to repeat these words. But none of us really has a clear education in mantric technique which is a very precise technique. And uh, only later I became more familiar with this technique. I consider this formula, which is a microcosm that has led to a microcosm which lasts over 63 minutes without a break, which is a very long duration in our tradition of music, in our context here in the West. Uh, I called it mantra. Uh, just look at a few phrases that I'm referring to. Where it says, where Aurobindo says what uh, mantra is. It's, he says, there exists in India a secret knowledge based on the study of sounds and the differences of vibratory modality according to the planes of consciousness as each of our centers of consciousness is in direct communication with the plane, one can thus, by the repetition of certain sounds, and here we should say, of certain sounds, of a sound formula, here it's 13 sounds, put oneself in communication with the corresponding plane of consciousness, which I certainly wouldn't like to define, this particular plane of consciousness. But uh, the repetition is quite clear in its expansions, 156 expansions different in 13 large cycles which are nothing but the projection of the mantra itself into a large time and space. The basic or essential sounds which have the power of establishing the communication are called mantra. And in that sense I think I'm using this word in a le legitimate way for my composition. The mantras always secret and given to the disciple by the Guru, that doesn't concern us here. He says, there is a sound, here the sound carries in itself the power of experience and realization. It is a, it is a sound that makes one see. He speaks of uh, mantras which kill, mantras which attack with precision a particular part or organ of the body, mantras which heal, mantras which kindle fire, which protect and spellbind. Uh, but he calls them uh, 
combination of certain sounds one can at lower levels of consciousness general at the vital level put oneself in relation with the corresponding forces and obtain many strange powers that's the one he quotes then he speaks of the lower levels but what is more interesting to us is than what is in the second block poetry in music also oh, yes poetry in music which is an unconscious handling of secret vibrations may then be considered a powerful means of the opening of consciousness. If we could succeed in composing poetry or music, which is the product of a conscious handling of higher vibrations, we would create great works having an initiatory power. Instead of a poetry which is the fantasy of the intellect and a notch girl of the mind, as Sri Aurobindo says, we would create a mantric music or poetry to bring the gods into our life. For true poetry is an act, it makes holes in the consciousness. We are so walled in, barricaded, through which the real can enter. It is a mantra of the real, an in initiation, etc. So this is perhaps what I'm most referring to. We would create a mantric music and I would be very grateful if I have to some extent succeeded in this work. You only can judge uh, upon this when you hear the entire work. And I would even say when you have had a chance to dive into its microcosm and relate it to the musical microcosm.